Hey everybody, welcome to my garage. You're in my garage. And my YouTube channel. Ha. There's been a lot of talk about love and romance and dating on the internet of late, sort of the hot button issue of the last year or so. You got the Manosphere, where all the guys are trying to figure out how to do this crap. She belongs to the streets. She's sucking your energy. She's not worth my time. You know what, guys? I have no sympathy for these women who fail to stay with their husbands. Who gives a f about a woman's orgasm? It's useless. Right. Uh -huh. Sorry. <laughs> you got some leftist dating advice streams. Chad Vice, where they teach you how to be a man in the good kind of way. Don't get toxic. Don't get upset and annoyed. You're not entitled to anyone else's time and anyone, no one is entitled to your time. Rather than standing here and ineffectively attempting to contribute to this pool of dating advice that young men so desperately are in need of, I thought it'd be better to approach it from the opposite end of the spectrum of what not to do. To do this, I have enlisted the help of some of my wonderful viewers. I made a community post asking for some bad dating stories that people have experienced when meeting with guys out in the wild. And while I did in the post specify that I was looking for stories about guys that were, you know, red pill misogyny type guys, it turns out misogyny happens all across the board and there was lots of different stories from different kinds of guys. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. So thank you for helping me make content by using your trauma. Thanks. This is Noah from like a few stories in content warning. There's a, a lot of like SA harassment and weird guys. A few years back, I matched with a guy on Tinder, met, and ate dinner. Very much a Reddit user and was an awkward experience overall with a public mishap at the restaurant as well. But what stuck out was when we shared an Uber back. I didn't want to make eye contact to give him the hint that it wasn't going anywhere. He proceeds to say, did you know lack of eye contact is a sign of autism? Definitely a good line to end a date with. I love how he's like, the only reason this girl could not like me and want to be looking at me right now is because of a medical diagnosis that I just made up and I'm giving to her right now. <laughs> Lack of eye contact is also famously a sign that she's just not into you, man. <laughs> Before I was out as non-binary, I matched with a guy on Bumble whose profile said, ask me about dinosaurs. So I did that, asking him what he knew about dinosaurs, and his reply was, have Tyrannosaurus sex with me. Come on, come on. Not even a single factoid about any lizards. You just right into the harassment. Awesome, man. <laughs> I once had a coffee date with a guy who mocked me for being a feminist and for thinking astrology was interesting. He also thought abortion was wrong and made it very clear that if he was dating someone and she was pregnant, that abortion would be out of the question. He went as far as to say that he would kidnap her and tie her down to a bed and force her to have the baby because it was his right as a father to do whatever to protect his child. Um, <laughs> nothing is sexier and more normal than threatening to recreate the alien scene from Alien with a woman because she doesn't want to have kids with you. Needless to say, I didn't see him again or respond to his messages for a follow up date. I didn't know if this fits into what you're looking for, but I figured I'd give my experience. No, that, that, that fits pretty well. Yeah, I mean, this isn't like that far off from the logical endpoint to pro-life ideology. If a woman's body is actually not her own body, but just a vessel to carry on the man's child, then yeah, you can kind of get up to some insane, illegal, uh, depraved acts of violence and subjugation because that's what your worldview is meant for. Few conservatives are this outward about those intentions, but yeah, that's that makes perfect sense for them, which is why it's just a wacky, it's a little bit wacky, you know? Whenever conservatives complain about how it's hard in the dating world for them because they're conservative, you can just refer back to something like this, literally any story like this. Went on a restaurant date with a guy. It was our second date. The entire time he was frantically checking his phone and darting glances over his shoulder. He sheepishly reveals that he has warrants out for his arrests for failure to show up to court after after DUIs. I try to wrap up the date quickly after that and ask for separate checks. He cuts me off and pays for both of us and proudly tells me he never lets the woman pay. I cut it off after that. I never let a woman pay except for my bail and the drinks on the night that I got my DUI and the other drinks on the other night that I got my other DUI. How cool to be if that decision is what ended up getting him caught by the police. He like he whips out his visa card that's being actively traced and his ego can't let him just can't can't do it. Says, no, nah, nah, I got this. It's all good. My friend set me up with this guy and probably 10 minutes into the date, he asks me if I'm a fan of Andrew Tate. I look at him and laugh thinking he is kidding. He gets extremely offended and says that he is being 100% serious and Tate had really
really helped him improve himself. At that point, I'm trying to change the subject so the date can go by faster and I can never see him again. Nothing I say changes the subject. He continues to say how men are becoming weaker and that today everyone is gay and wearing nail polish. Like this man is a parody of himself. I genuinely feel like John Quinones is about to walk out at any moment. I respond saying being homophobic 30 minutes into a first date is a bold move, which makes him even more defensive to the point where he tries to involve the poor server in the debate, who is understandably extremely confused and embarrassed. At this point, he's debating with himself because I've given up. The date ends and I tell him, politely might I add, just to make sure things don't go south, that this isn't going to work out. He agreed and says I would never have been fit to bear his children anyway. <laughs> Completely normal thing to be thinking on a first date, by the way, not alarming at all. He then told our mutual friend we had that I was a raging bitch that had spent the entire date attempting to emasculate and humiliate him. So yeah, these are the strong and confident men Tate is fostering with his multi-level marketing scheme. I truly couldn't believe that these guys actually exist. Unfortunately, yeah, that's that's the conclusion with a lot of these. It's like, wow, this stuff that happens on the internet actually does affect the real world sometimes, and it's and it's shitty, you know? Just a nightmare of a debate. Getting the server involved is so, so wild. Your ego is that threatened by someone mildly criticizing you for something you're saying. Again, like when conservatives talk about having trouble dating and how they're oppressed because of their views, good. That's good. That's how it should be because their views are heinous and bad. Had an ex try to put on Kevin Samuels, not turn it off when I asked, and argue with me that Kevin Samuels was some nuanced, level-headed business success guy. I had to break his heart and prove to him that this grifting weirdo on the TV screen was not powerful, ultra-rich, in a relationship, or even fashionable. I love how she calls it breaking his heart, because that is how men that watch Kevin Samuels feel about him. They love him. They are in a relationship with him and his teachings, and slander of any sort uh, is legitimately devastating. My ex was approaching 30, I was 19. It didn't last. Kind of my flop era, to be honest. <laughs> if ever there was a Manosphere guy out in the wild, it would be a 30-year-old man showing a teenager Kevin Samuels clips and getting sad when the teenager said, that guy's kind of a weirdo. I don't have one, I just want to say hi. <laughs> okay, hi. What's up? Thanks for, thank you. I once had a guy who was so obsessed with getting sex after a date that he tried to stab me in the car when I refused to touch him sexually. So this is a crime. This is cr a crime, actually. I don't know if I can keep reading it. I'm gonna keep reading it and just, I'm blurring all the names just in case, but yeah, that's a crime. Weirdly enough, I have experienced being the target of an attempted stabbing, so my arms were barely grazed, protecting my torso while I quickly bailed from the passenger seat. We were parked, thankfully. He immediately apologized and asked me to get back in? He somehow couldn't understand why I didn't feel safe with him and chose to walk instead. Okay. Okay. Okay, good job walking away from that. Um, that's attempted, attempted violent sexual assault. One time I went through a breakup and after a phase where I wanted to hook up with anyone who wanted to hook up with me. One day I went on a date with this guy, we got smoothies. He wasn't expecting any sex, but he came over later. He was like, I haven't had sex in two years and it showed. We 69 and I swear to God, I almost puked giving him head. I don't know why, but it was the nastiest, dirtiest, smelliest day. I ever sucked. Ah. Uh, afterwards, he wanted to talk about our exes and I felt bad, so I listened. He went home after that, never again. Okay, this is, this is, that's nasty. That's, that is pretty, we don't, it, that's unfortunate, you know? Tip number one here is obviously a uh, shower, clean, clean everything up, make sure you're clean, spick and span, use soap. Soap is good. But I think the bigger thing is maybe communicate that you maybe aren't ready f to get physical in that way. It's tough because this is like a hookup, so you're probably not at that level of communication where you're able to say, hey, can you just go shower, please? Cause you smell pretty bad. And he sounds like he's not comfortable enough to do the same. So it's just bad, it's bad all around. Don't let that dissuade you from hookups if you want to do hookups and that's what you are expecting from then on. Because I think most people, when they understand that that's what's gonna happen, will probably prepare a little bit Better. But also, I don't know, that's just that's just unfortunate. Talk about that one in the comments for everybody. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but ultimately, you know, why not just clean up? Clean your balls, boys. Come on. Clean your balls, boys. All right, this one's a long one. A strap in. So I'd previously been on one or two dates with this dude. Things had been going well, so we decided to have a sleepover at his house. I arrive and the red flags immediately begin. His dining room table is absolutely piled high with Magic the Gathering cards. He makes his very sweet and needy dog sleep in the garage. He doesn't have a door to his bathroom. Okay. Okay, the no door to the bathroom is fucking wild. Just stinking up the whole 
the whole house ass out. Maybe that's why he keeps his dog in the garage to save his life. I don't think that's it, but let's, we can, let's see. In the moment, I ignored the red flags. I think to myself, this dude has been nothing but sweet and we both love the same nerdy stuff, so it's fine. Dinner comes around. We decide to make mac and cheese, the boxed kind. I go into his fridge to get the milk and butter and um, he doesn't have any. As I turn around to inform him that he's out, I watch him pour the whole dried cheese packet into the pot of plain noodles, add a tiny dash of tap water and stir the whole bland concoction like it's the most normal thing in the universe. I ask him, aren't you going to put butter or milk in there? And he looks at me like I've asked him to mix in bleach. By the way, this man is 32. Uh... <laughs> oh, this is so difficult. If this guy likes to make his craft in this way with a dash of water and pain, that's, you know, that's fine, but not when you have someone over for the first time. <laughs> like you're you're sharing the meal. You're you're making this essentially for you and someone else. Mainly for someone else, because this is the first time they're at your house. What are you what do you <laughs> orange chalky powder mixed with translucent cheese sauce? Very good for you. Very normal. I think to myself, whatever. He cares about his health. This totally isn't a sign of things to come. <laughs> I eat the mac and cheese. We cuddle for a bit as we try and decide what movie to watch. He was a computers guy and had a personal website of pirated movies. As a Pirate Bay enjoyer, uh, this is a high value man. I can respect that. Too many streamings, too many not enough monies. At the time, the second Harley Quinn movie, Birds of Prey, had recently come out. I wanted to watch it because I really love of Margot Robbie and how she's developed the Harley Quinn character. Apparently, this is a grievous sin to my date. He immediately launches into a tirade about how Joker is the victim in the relationship. Harley Quinn was initially created as a girlfriend to Joker because all Harley wanted was to change Joker when Joker was already fine to begin with. Not only that, but he insists that Harley's toxic psycho bitchness is supported by the comics and the original material. Big mistake on his part, I'm a massive nerd and I basically was raised on Batman, the animated series, aka the medium in which Harley Quinn was first introduced. I tell him that the original TV show makes it clear that Harley was to be pitied because she is clearly being manipulated by the Joker. He insists that Harley Quinn was better than when her whole personality was loving the Joker unconditionally. I think to myself, uh, huh, kind of a red flag. <laughs> for the seventh time. I love that. I respect but don't admire your willingness to give the benefit of the doubt. I'm getting the distinct feeling that he is heavily projecting on the relationship and sees himself as the Joker in this situation. But I'd driven an hour to meet him and gas was expensive and he had a hot tub and a sweet dog and I wasn't feeling in danger or anything so I decided to go through with the date. We talk nerd stuff, hang out in the hot tub, which he's put at the highest heat setting, and then do adult things in the bedroom. Afterwards he informs me that he does not want to be touched or cuddled with him after the fact. There's nothing that can quite rival the profound loneliness that comes with being being essentially ignored after sex. I stare at the ceiling in mild distress, wanting desperately to cuddle, but also wanting to respect his boundaries. Oh God, him curled up on the bed, cold, no blanket, cheese sauce on his lips, not no milk, just watery cheese sauce. Towers of Magic the Gathering cards about to topple over and crush them both to death. This is beautiful. The urge to cuddle is abruptly cut off as he rolls over, informs me that he doesn't like to lock his doors at night, keeps a gun in his bedside table, and then falls asleep on the spot. <laughs> this is deeply unsettling behavior. And like last week's video, another guy that has a gun and kind of is looking forward to an opportunity to use it potentially. I'm gonna go down and go to work. By, you know, intentionally not locking his doors. The date ends next morning when he admits that he and his buddies may have sexually assaulted a girl in high school, but tried to frame it as her fault because she actually begged to suck everyone's dick. And then changed her mind afterwards and that did it then that it didn't matter anyway because his dad had gotten them out of the charges in court. The day after that, while I'm at my ADHD and autism assessment, he texts me and says that he doesn't want to see me anymore because I give off weird vibes. And that's the worst date I've ever had. <laughs> okay, well hopefully that's the worst you'll ever have because that sounds that was really bad. <laughs> Common themes in the ones we've looked at thus far are just basically ignoring what the other person might want or be interested in, right? Just completely, this is about them, their interests, their way of making mac and cheese. Um, and you know, that's bad when it's not mutual like that. Dates are supposed to be fun for everybody. I guess it is kind of a skill to learn to really be attentive to other people's needs, but also there's, there's just a very low bar here that's being stumbled over and face planted into some watery orange sauce. I went on a date with a guy who was a total personality catfish. He seemed nice enough on the app, but when we met, he would not stop talking about how naturally redhead women are the best looking. 
I'm brunette. <laughs> what? And how polyamorous is flawed. I'm polyamorous for years and we started the date on that premise. Okay, so he's just talking shit to you specifically. Polyamory is flawed because the top 20% of men will get 80% of the women and other Jordan Peterson Pareto principalisms. He was very intense with the waiter about how his water needed to be a certain number of ice bubbles because his metabolism needed very cold water to run properly. He showed me pictures of his apartment where all his belongings were velcroed to the wall. He was very proud of this because he thought it was clever and efficient. Honestly, See, it looked like the home of a serial killer. I'm not in the business of wasting my own time, so I leveled with him that it's not a good fit, gave him some cash and bounce before the entrees arrived. Wow. Wow, I actually, that that's awesome that, that you're that able to identify the red flags and get the fuck out of there respectfully as well. Depending on how long you've been uh, dating actively, there's a style of how much you're willing to deal with that I think it sounds like this was really on the low end for this person, which is so funny compared to the mac and cheese situation. It was red flag after red flag, but it was just like, I, I don't know, this guy seems nice, it's whatever. And different people respond to different things differently. So very Patrick Bateman vibes from this guy, I feel like. All right, so to end this, we're gonna look at some uh, fuckboy weirdo leftists because that's very much a thing and also not something I asked for in the prompt, which makes me want to include it because people felt that it was worth including. Trigger warning for physical abuse. I dated a guy, I'll call him Alan, that I thought was so leftist. He campaigned for Bernie Sanders, said he was a feminist, didn't mind that I used to be a sex worker. Then as time is passing, I started to notice all these little breadcrumbs, like how all of his exes were crazy. His mom was crazy. His sister was crazy. He didn't agree with the Free Britney movement because she was crazy. But no men ever were. The genuinely horrible ex I had before him was supposedly so reasonable for trying to sabotage any romantic relationship I attempted to have, including the one with with Alan. Because he missed me, physically abusive men shouldn't always get in trouble because sometimes the woman deserves it. He wasn't a manosphere guy, but I bring him up because these guys aren't always on the right. Listen for those dog whistles and keep an eye out for red flags. If a person says shit that makes you uncomfortable, dump them. But misogyny, it runs through all political affiliations. Being a leftist does not make you a good person, nor does it exclude you from uh, being an absolute freak. This next one kind of goes along with that same sentiment. Yes, it wasn't a bad one though. He was very sweet and joyful. He dislikes Andrew Tate, but like Thanks, Jordan Peterson. When I visited his place, we played with his pets. He has three cats. He washed the dishes after eating. He washed his hands after peeing. I mean, those are the bare minimum, but my point is he was a decent person. What's funny is I was with a guy who claimed himself to be a feminist, but he was very verbally abusive and used to yell at me a lot and unemployed. I like how unemployed is just tagged on as, as a single word. He was verbally abusive and unemployed. The semi-normal guy that happens to like Jordan Peterson, I think is uh, definitely a thing because it's like people can like Jordan Peterson for different things. Some people like him uh, for the transphobia. That's not good. Other people like him because he does self-help and usually that's usually fine. Okay, worst date ever. This dude was nice, paid for my drinks, and we talked a lot about left-wing politics since he said he was a leftist. Despite this, he let it slip that he considered himself a black-pilled Chad Light. Hearing those words IRL gave me an aneurysm and listened to Peterson, but I, a fool, assumed it was satire or something. The longer the date went on, I realized he had stopped letting me talk and instead started venting about his ex-girlfriend. He then drove me home, threatening to drive us into oncoming traffic so he could die. Why confessed his love to me and begged for sex because he paid for my drinks. So here we have uh, the other Jordan Peterson fan in the room. Uh, that's that all. That all adds up. A week later, I found out that he lied about being a leftist to have sex with women. Obama moment. So in terms of advice for men, I would say don't do that. And sound advice that is indeed because what the fuck is he? What is he? What was he doing? Okay, everybody. So that's it for this thing. I might make this a series because there were so many submissions and I couldn't really get to them all, but if you guys would be interested in that, let me know. Stay safe out there on, on the apps. Uh, and fellas, don't be weirdos and happy dating, I guess. I was gonna include some good dating stories, but I think that's the next video. So anyways, see ya. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs>